Neil deGrasse Tyson was born and raised in New York City, where he was educated in the public school system and graduated from the Bronx High School of Science. Dr. Tyson went on to earn his BA in physics from Harvard and his PhD in astrophysics from Columbia. His professional research interests include star formation, exploding stars, dwarf galaxies, and the structure of our Milky Way. In 2001, Dr. Tyson was appointed by President Bush to serve on a 12-member commission that studied the future of the U.S. aerospace industry. Some of you are familiar with that study. With no good deed going unpunished, Dr. Tyson was appointed again in 2004 by the President to serve on a nine-member commission on the implementation of the United States space exploration policy, dubbed the Moon, Mars, and Beyond Commission. In addition to dozens of professional publications, Dr. Tyson has written and continues to write for the public. He is a monthly essayist for Natural History Magazine under the title Universe. And among Dr. Tyson's seven books, one is his memoir, although I don't think you're old enough yet to have a memoir, The Sky is Not the Limit, Adventures of an Urban Astrophysicist, and Origins, 14 Billion Years of Cosmic Evolution, co-written with Donald Goldsmith. His Origins is the companion book to the PBS Nova four-part miniseries, Origins, in which Dr. Tyson serves as the on-camera host. The program premiered in September of 2004. Dr. Tyson's contributions to the public appreciation of the cosmos have recently been recognized by the International Astronomical Union in their official naming of asteroid 13123 Tyson. On the lighter side, Neil was voted the sexiest astrophysicist alive. <laughs> this was documented in the November issue of People magazine, and I understand there are copies in the lobby. <laughs> Dr. Tyson is also the first occupant of the Frederick P. Rose directorship of the Hayden Planetarium, where he also teaches. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. I should clarify a few things about that introduction. Uh, first of all, I have on good authority that that asteroid with my name on it is not headed towards Earth, <laughs> so there's no blaming going on there. Second, that People Magazine distinction, uh, first, consider the category, all right? <laughs> Maybe I beat out Stephen Hawking for that, I don't know. That same issue, the sexiest man alive without category was Brad Pitt, okay? He, he was on the cover. I was like a half a page on, you know, page 70. So just want to clarify that, okay. Uh, <laughs> I thought I... Not that you asked, but I thought I would spend a few minutes telling you a little bit about me, just so you know who, who's talking to you, okay? I was born... <laughs> good start, yeah, good start. I was born the same week that NASA was founded. In that same year, a few other people were born. I don't know if th this is auspicious or not, but you will be the judge of this for sure. Madonna was born that year. <laughs> not the first Madonna, the second Madonna. <laughs> Michael Jackson was born that year. The artist formerly known as, the artist formerly known as Prince was born that year. Michelle Pfeiffer. Sharon Stone. <laughs> the Barbie doll. 
Now, by the way, some of you women are dressed. I know you played with Barbie dolls in your life. <laughs> what? I'm just... I'm just... I, I look at the heels that you can't walk in. The Barbie couldn't walk either, you know? I just... One other thing from that year, the movie The Blob first appeared. But perhaps most important of them all, that was the first year of this dinner, 1958. I want to give an applause to that legacy. I'm an astrophysicist. It's one of the oldest, it's the second oldest profession. <laughs> People have been looking up for a long time. But as an academic, it puts me a little bit outside of the club. I'm, I, yes, I spent quality time within the aerospace community in my service on these two commissions. But fundamentally, I'm an academic. And as an academic, it means I don't wield power over person, place, or thing. I don't command armies. I don't command labor unions. All I have is the power of thought. That's all I have. And because I don't have a constituency, it means I can pretty much say whatever I want. <laughs> pretty much. And with this power of thought, I look around at this troubled world in which we live, and I worry because I don't think enough people are putting thought into what they do. That's a, I, I'm concerned about that. Oh, okay. I, I, I have some examples. <laughs> I was reading the newspaper. Dangerous thing to do always. There's a newspaper headline complaining. 50% of the schools in the district are below average. <laughs> That's what an average is. You get about half below, half above. I got another one. You ready for this? 80% of airplane crash survivors read where the exit doors were before takeoff. So you say, okay, well that's a good piece of information. I'm gonna read where the exit doors are. But here's the problem with that datum. The problem is, suppose 100% of the dead people read where the exit doors were. You would never know because they're dead. This is the kind of fuzzy thinking going on in the world today. Got another one. You know they say that the state lottery is a tax on the poor because people with low income spend a disproportionate of their monies on the lottery. So it's called a tax on the poor. It is not a tax on the poor. It's a tax on all those people who never studied mathematics. <laughs> That's what it is. It doesn't stop there. Three years ago, I had finally spent more than three years in one residence. As an academic, I moved in graduate school, postdoc, and the like. Spent